lot of panic buying. Don't do a lot of compulsive shopping. The more you are out there unnecessarily, you are exposing yourself to this virus, no matter how you cover yourself. So if you can avoid anything you can push, anything you can postpone, postpone it for now. Wash your hands with soap and water. Eat healthy fruits, vegetables. Amen? Drink lots of um, uh, uh, healthy drinks uh, like uh, lemon juice, freshly squeezed if you can. Warm. And, and, and some people are talking about garlic. I'm not sure, but... It, it's not bad to, to take a little bit of garlic, except you will have bad breath. Uh, ginger. Okay. So just try and eat healthy. Drink lots of water. And uh, tea. I love mantania or green tea. Warm. So just do these natural, natural things to boost your immune system. And stay away as much as you can. In Jesus' precious name. And spend time with the family. Spend time with your loved ones. Um, just intentionally use this time to rest, seek the face of God, and spend time with the family. Because this time may never come again. Or it may take a long time to have such opportunities. May the Lord continue to keep us all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We miss you all, those that are, uh, we usually see each other and all that. Know these that we miss you all, but we all want you to be safe. And we are planning, we, we are also trying to be safe. That's why we have to obey these rules. Amen. Hallelujah. I have a word for us today. And um, I'm excited. And the word is titled, Are You Being Pruned? Are you being pruned? Are you being pruned? That word pruned is a Greek word taking katabio. And it means, are you being cleaned? Are you being purged? Are you being pruned? Let's take two scriptures as we go into this word today. First one, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 11. Hebrews 12 and verse 11. It says, now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, that chastening yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Hallelujah. Amen? Mm. The second one is taken from John 15 and verse 2. John 15 and verse 2. I will read verse, let, allow me read from verse 1, one, two, three. Let me read those three verses. But really, probably my focus is verse 2. Let's go from verse 1, please. Verse 1. Media? Verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it. He prunes it. He cleans it that it may bring forth more fruit. And verse 3, verse 3. Now you are 
pruned. Now you are clean. Now you are purged through the word which I have spoken unto you. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Bless this word this morning. Let this word bring light. Let it bring understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Family, we see that there are people that they appear to be in Christ, but they are not producing. If you watch this passage, if you pay attention to it, Jesus Christ says, I am the vine. And my father is the vine dresser. He's the one that takes care of the vine. Now, but he says that there are branches on him. Branches. There are branches. There's a branch that produces fruit on him. And there's a branch that does not produce fruit. So it's like they look like Christians. Maybe they are even Christians. But they are not producing fruit. And they, because they are in the vine. Hmm. We remember in Matthew 7 verse 21 where the Lord says, Not everyone that calls me Lord, Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But who? Those that do the will of my Father in heaven. Matthew 7 21. Please, media, walk with me. Let's all pay attention. Pay attention to the message and flow with me. Fast. Matthew 7, 21. Very little talk in there, please, media. Thank you. Let me say something, please. Uh, check uh, the exploits of our children in the media online on Facebook. They've been doing some amazing things, and they've been talking about this this series, Bearing Fruits, and it's so refreshing to see that the children are understanding this series, this month's message, focus. They're getting it. They're understanding we need to bear fruits and what it means to bear fruits. So please, when you have time, check on Called Out Christian Ministries. Check it out. Check what, uh, their videos. They've done one where they look more serious, and they've done one where they're a little bit more like little like children. So it will bless you. Hallelujah. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. We need to remember that God is a businessman. Hallelujah. Our God is a businessman. Our God is out to make profit from everything that he does. It reminds me of the story of the talents. In Matthew 25, verse, uh, uh, I think from verse 14. In Matthew 25, from verse 14, we read the story of the talents there. Let's look at this briefly. Let's go there briefly. Uh, from verse 14, it says, I'll, I'll just take some snippets from it. You know the story. And we'll just take some snippets. Um, Matthew 25 and verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. Watch that, family. So on that tree... There are branches, and everyone is expected to produce some kind of fruit. You're expected to yield fruit, but according to your own ability. God is expecting every one of us to yield fruit. So he gives talent according to the ability. He gives nourishment. He gives understanding of the word. He gives grace. He gives finances. He gives wisdom. He gives intelligence. He gives innovation according to your own ability. And he wants you to use it to produce fruit. So he gives to these guys. And you know the story. One of them had five talents. Traded with it. Traded. Did stuff with it. 
<clears throat> and he made another five talents. The one with two also did what he could. He, he, he allowed himself. Okay? I want you to think about it as allowing the word of God to work in your life. Listening to that word that you're hearing. Some are hearing word at the level of five talents. God wants you to yield at the level of five talents. Some are hearing at the level of one talent. God wants you to yield at that level of one talent. Hallelujah. But the one with one talent, what did he do with it? The Bible says he went and he buried it. And he did not only bury it when the man now came. The one with five talents said, look, master, I, this is what I did. I heard that word, that word that says, ah, I need to arise and shine for my light has come. And I arose and I started shining. And the other one said, oh, Lord, I heard that I need to be, I need to, I need to deal with my anger. I need to deal with this anger. And I, he listened. And here, I have made from two talents, I have another two talents. Hallelujah. But this one with the one talent now said this. Look at what he even said. He said, Master, let's read that. I, I know you. <clears throat> ah, 24. In verse 24 of that Matthew 25. Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. You reap where you have not sown. And you gather where you've not scattered seed. Yet he gave him one talent. Is that not a seed? And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But what did the master say to him? The master said to him, the master said, you are a wicked, not just wicked, you're lazy. You're wicked and you're lazy. At least you could have put it in the bank and get interest on it. So it means that God always wants us to yield fruit. Hallelujah. He's a businessman and he expects fruit. God is expecting yield from you, family, in your character in your relationships, in how you affect people. And what did he do? He cast that servant into the outer darkness. Why? Why did he cast them into the outer darkness? Him, into the outer darkness. So that that guy will not corrupt the other ones. So when you see a gardener, when he looks at his branches, come on now. Now, I hope you're walking with me. When he looks at his branches, when he looks at the branches, he looks at it. That gardener comes. He looks. He sees this one. He sees that this one has already caught fungus. It's, it may, he looks. He says, no, uh, I have to cut it off. Why? So that the fungus will not spread to the other branches. So that is why he cast him. Outside, unprofitable, look at that. And cast ye the unprofitable servant. Unprofitable, no profit. God was not getting anything from this person. Into outer darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. May that not be our portion in Jesus' precious name. It is the same as weeding the bad stuff out. When you weed the bad stuff. Remember, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 12, Matthew chapter 3, verse 12, the Bible tells us that ah, when John the Baptist was talking about Jesus that will come after him, he said his winnowing fan is in his hand. He said that he has a fan. He, again, think about it, about pruning, purging, cleaning, cutting off what should not be there. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he's going to blow it. He's going to blow it to separate what? The wheat. From the chaff. Hallelujah. He's going to blow it to separate the, the productive from the unproductive. Hallelujah. Matthew 3.12. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. The, and, <clears throat> and again, in Hebrews 12.29. Hebrews 12.29. For our God is a consuming fire. 
He will burn unprofitable branches. May we not be an unprofitable branch in Jesus' precious name. So, the end of a branch is this. It can only be two things. The end of a branch. One is for firewood. <laughs> or the other is to produce fruits. The question is, which one do we want to be? I think the answer is obvious. Amen? So, I want to make some observations about that passage in John 15. I want to make some observations. I have a few observations I want to make this morning to encourage us and to, to bring more light to it. Amen? Hallelujah. Number one, please note that the branches that are lopped off and cast into fire are on the same vine. I say that. Don't forget that. They are on the same vine as the ones that are supposed to bring fruit. The fruit-producing branches are themselves not perfect. <laughs> Note that. Because sometimes people, you know their excuse? They say, you don't know. You don't know the evil I've done. You don't know how bad I have it. You don't know how bad I have been in addiction. You don't know how, how terrible my past was. You don't know all the things that I have done. So, just let me continue struggling like that. You, I'm looking at you. Yes, you are producing fruit. Yes, you are so holy. Your dad is rich. Your mom is rich. You were born with a silver spoon and gold spoon and platinum spoon in your mouth. That's why. That's why. No! No! The race is not to the swift. Amen? Everyone running their race. You see, that man was not asking from the one with two. Did not ask him to produce what five talents produced. They got the same blessing. Enter thee into the joy of your master. Well done, good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Amen? So, so, this branch, everyone there, even all these ones that are producing fruit, they are not perfect. We are not perfect. None of us in the house of God, nobody has attained, hey, immaculate perfection. That person that is in the branch is also, that is producing a little bit of fruit, is not perfect. God is still working. You, but you know the difference? They are allowing God to purge them, to clean them. Amen? It's not about perfection. They need pruning. We all have issues that God is still working out in our lives if we allow him. For example, when the word is being preached, if it is not received with some level of maturity, you know what it does? It makes people run with zeal without knowledge. They will start to do things that show that they don't have any understanding. So it can breed pride in some people. It makes them feel that they know it all. You know, they're hearing. Hey, they're hearing some word and all that. All of a sudden, they go, they say, yeah, yeah, all you guys I, at my house, they see people, they're still struggling. They look down on them. It builds pride. They can get so proud that they become totally insensitive to people that are still struggling to receive that word. For some, it's the other way around. Zeal without knowledge. When they, when they don't allow the pruning, they just receive the word. You understand? The word is too much. They just receive the word. He says, ah, one of the fruits is gentleness. They get so compliant, they never know how to correct any evil. They're so gentle. They say, I'm expressing gentleness. They never correct anything that is wrong. That is zeal without knowledge. Mm. You, you, you know, uh, they, they, uh, they, it means they accept everything without being able to correct members, church members, family. Amen. Number two, another reason or observation is that the pruning is necessary 
because even the fruit producing branches, they should be pruned because they carry excess baggage, excess weight, unnecessary things. Remember in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Ah, we are told there that living behind. Ah, Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Living behind all those things ah, that excess weight, excess baggage, and unnecessary sin ah, that enco easily encumbers us. Easily we carry them. Living them. So even you that you are producing fruit, God needs to purge you because you are carrying excess baggage. We know that athletes, when, when, they, when they are uh, going to perform uh, at an event and all that, they trim off excess baggage because they want to go in at their best. At their best. Pruning is essential, family, and is the lot of all children of God. So I want to look you, the very few of us that are here this morning, in the eye today. Look us in the eye and say, please listen carefully to this that I'm going to say now. If you are in a place and people that are listening to me online that can understand. If you are in a place, if you are in a church... And you're always questioning the heart of the pastors. You're always questioning their messages and teachings. It may not be the right place for you. Because you need to be in a place where you can receive. It's very, very important. You need to be. You will see, you see some people, no matter how the message is, they will always come to you and you, when they want to say something is that you didn't talk about that one. <laughs> what about the one that has been talked about that we can see in your life that you are not using? Amen? <laughs> so every one of us, we must intentionally look for a place where we can and should receive from the pulpit, from the leadership. Once you know more, <laughs> once you are unable to receive, once you have become higher than the leadership, then you know that you are on the wrong vine. <laughs> you, will be, you will need to be grafted into another vine. Uh, I'm teaching somebody something today. Remember that Jesus Christ says, the disciple is not above his master. Once you are unable to receive from the vine of Jesus Christ, you know too much more than Jesus. You, you, you cannot receive from him. Then you need to find yourself a different vine or you will soon be cut off. Number three or number four, I'm not sure now. Another important observation is how we get pruned. Aha. How do we get pruned? This might be the core of my message today. Please allow me to say this. Pruning is the lot, is the fate of every child of God. I have said that. I'm repeating it. If you are not pruned, know this very well. You should question it. Maybe you are not his child. You will be cut off. How then do we get pruned? We read it during our call to worship today. How do we get pruned? We read it in Hebrews 12, 5 to 11. We re read there about chastening, the chastisement that comes from God. We read there that even fathers in this world, these natural fathers, we chastise our children. You know, apart from those few abusive parents, most parents, you don't, you don't, you don't chastise your children just for the sake of chastising them. You're chastising them. You discipline them. You correct them because you want something beautiful out of them. And it's the same with our God. Even more so 
with our Lord. Even more so. So I hear people sometimes say that God sends affliction. And God uses affliction to prune us. Say it is that sickness. God uses it to prune us. Coronavirus. God uses it to prune us. God uses it to prune us. Allow me to disagree. But let me clarify what I mean. <clears throat> I know that hardly do you ever hear that somebody became more holy because they are flying first class or in a special or in a jet. Indeed, a lot of people, they tend to listen to God more when that leg is broken and they are at home doing nothing. Indeed. So it's easy to think that it is the affliction that brings the pruning. No. Charles Spurgeon, one of those mighty preachers, used the word, used a phrase that I love so much. He said, affliction is the handle of the knife that God uses to prune. Watch that. The knife that God uses to prune, right? The knife that God uses to cut the branches, to prune the branches, so that that branch can be clean and grow better and all that. Affliction is the handle of that knife. And what is really the knife? The Word of God. The Word of God. Family, it is the Word of God that changes people. It is the Word of God that God uses to correct us primarily. Watch. Watch a lot of times. It's not the sickness. God has been telling you, be kind. Be gentle. Don't have, don't have extra, uh, uh, extramarital sex. Don't commit adultery. God has, that's the word God has been saying. That's the word that he's been using. You are sitting down, he's telling you, stop it. Don't commit adultery. Don't drink alcohol. God is telling you that. Don't get drunk. Don't get drunk. Don't get drunk. One day, you get in the car. You will get, not you, in Jesus' name. But that person gets in the car. After having taken some drinks, and they crash. And they are paralyzed. And now, they turn to God. And they say, God afflicted them. Mm-mm. God brought the word. But that word, unfortunately, the word of God carries repercussions. Uh -huh. It carries repercussions. When we don't obey the word, naturally, the affliction will get there and handle the word. It's very important, family, that we're clear on that. And why is it important? Because I want to emphasize I want to emphasize where I really want my emphasis to be is upon the word of God to correct us. Too many times people sit at church and they fight the word of God. They fight the word of God. That word is coming. It's coming with a pure heart. It's coming with love for people. It's coming because that the, the, the vessel God is breaking. He's even breaking that vessel himself or herself. God is for a word for you. God wants to use that word to deliver you, to save you. I believe so much that Jacob must have told Joseph, look, you saw what Dinah did? You saw what happened to Dinah? You see the problem of, 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 of rape? You see the problem of, of, of uh, sex before marriage? You see the problems? Avoid it, my son. Avoid it, my son. Avoid it, my son. He did not know that Joseph would be carried away into slavery to Egypt. Joseph listened to the word. And he did not see the affliction. Amen? Hmm. 
if we ignore the word of warning, that is when the natural consequences of ignoring his word brings the affliction. Look at John 15, verse 3. Look at John 15, verse 3. Please put it up on the screen. That's very important. I want you to put it up on the screen. John 15 and verse 3. Because it tells us how God prunes us. John 15 and verse 3. Watch. Now you are purged. Now you are pruned. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That's it. That's all God wants. God does not want any affliction in our lives. Hasn't God been calling us all to go to church? Hasn't God been calling us all to spend more time with our family? Hasn't God been calling us all to slow down a little bit and just uh, inhale and thank him for the sun, the moon, the stars? Well, coronavirus decided to come. Now people are forced to sit at home. <laughs> uh, you are pruned clean by the word that I speak to you. One other scripture as I close. Psalm 119. Psalm 119 verse 67 and verse 71. Psalm 119 verse 67 first. Media please. Psalm 119. 119. And verse 67. Okay. I'll read it from here then. Psalm 119. And verse 67. It says, uh, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, I keep your word. Thank you, sir. Is it not like that a lot? Now, go to verse 71. Look at 71, that same chapter. 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. That I might learn your status, your word. So that I can learn your word. So the basis, everything is all just listen to my word. That's all. That's all. God does not want to bring affliction on any one of us. But least just listen to my word and obey my word. That's it. Hmm. So when a person allows the word of God to start to affect them and take root in their lives. What happens is that they are being pruned. And they start to bear fruits. So you see a man that had explosive anger. But he comes to the church. And he's listening every day. That, ah, a man without control of his anger is like a city without walls. He says that anger, the person that takes anger, is like somebody putting, carrying fire and putting it in his heart. When he starts hearing that, all, that's all. He doesn't have to see the consequence yet. He doesn't have to lose his children. He doesn't have to lose his family. He hears the word. He allows that word to touch him. He says, uh -uh. Lord, I need help. Lord, I need help. That's it. That's what God is looking for. Hallelujah. And then you suddenly see that it doesn't flare up in anger as suddenly as before anymore. He's not yet perfect. He needs to keep allowing himself to be pruned. And that's okay. But you will see that. You will see the change. Praise God. That sister that never wanted to associate with people previously will suddenly start looking for ways in which they can participate at church. In which they can contribute. Hmm? Her prayers, his worship is now more genuine. When they are worshiping, it's coming from a place of, of gratitude to God. It's coming from a place of the Holy Spirit. It's no longer mechanical. It flows more from the heart. There's a closer fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Finally. 
I want us to pray for the word of God that will circumcise us, that will cut us, that will prune us, that will purge us, that will clean us. That's the kind of word that we need. This same Charles Spurgeon said something that I love so much. He said, <laughs> he said, he said, the prayer that people in the pulpit, people that are listening to me online, the prayer you should be praying is, Lord, deliver the preacher, anyone I'm going to listen for, to deliver them from building pillows under my armpit that will make me sleep. Deliver that preacher from building pillows that will make me sleep. And that's the prayer when we come to church. Lord, you know me. You know what I'm going through. You know the things you want to change in my life. Please, Lord, speak to that pastor today. He must talk. The things I need. The area I need. The things I need to correct. Lord, give it to him. I, I need that word. Do we come to church with such expectation? Or we come to church, mm, when what you said didn't bless me. It's a lie. It's pride. You will soon be cut off. So, I'm done. Family, I hope you're blessed by this message. Those of you that are listening to us online, I just want us to pray one prayer as we close. That word that will truly purge me. Lord, that's what I ask for. Let me not miss it. The word that will correct me. That's what I need. I will, because I have to bear fruit. I don't want to be cast into the outer darkness. I don't want to be cast into the place of gnashing and weeping of a, a gnashing of teeth and weeping. I don't want that. I want to be fruitful. I want to leave a legacy to my family. I want to leave a legacy to my children. I want to affect people around me. I want people around me to see your life. To see that you are working in me. I want my wife to see that I am not the man she married 20 years ago. I want my wife to see that... God is touching my life. That I am changing. Let us pray. I want my children to see that difference. I really do. Lord, I, I, I'm, serious. I'm praying personally for myself now. I want my children to see that. I want them to see that daddy wants to serve Jesus. Daddy desires to live a godly life. A daddy is not, his life is not just what is seen on the pulpit, but what they see at home. What they see at home. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us give God a clap offering this morning. Blessed be his holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Family, we appreciate you. We love you. Thank you for joining us uh, online. Uh, we miss you all, and we know that soon, because we have prayed, because of the elect, God will shorten the time. Soon, we will all be able to hug each other again, see each other again, and, and just fellowship together again. I hope that this effort that few of us have made, so that you still keep the fire burning on your altar, so that you don't slack, and you don't take fear, don't take fear at this time. Take faith. Take the word of God. I pray that this little effort to keep you still close to the word of God, to the things of God, 
I hope it has been a blessing to you and to your family today. May the Lord richly bless us all. Have a blessed week. Let the blood of Jesus create a hedge of fire round about you, round about your family, round about every one of us, round about everything that is, that is dear to our heart. The Lord keep us all in Jesus' precious name. It's a glorious week for us. No evil will come near our dwelling. No plague will come near our home in the name of Jesus Christ. All the glory belongs to our God. Amen. Oh, glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Oh, glory, glory, glory to the Lord. No one should take the glory but you. Oh, no one deserves the glory but you. No one should take, no one should take the glory but you. No one deserves the glory. No one deserves the glory but you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you adoration forevermore. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you adoration forevermore. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love, the love of God, of God and the, the sweet, sweet fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be, be with us now, now and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, Surely God's, God's goodness and mercy are following us all the days of our lives. And we are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.